here at the Midwest LSA Expo in Mount Vernon, Illinois. I took an opportunity to go fly with an old friend, Pete Karate, in an airplane called the J230D Jabiru. I'm Dan Johnson, and it was an interesting experience again. It's been some time since I flew this airplane. It's one of the few airplanes, I'm not a real tall guy, but as you can see in the camera, I stand taller than this airplane. I can see over the top of it. <laughs> That's not usually the case. So the first time I remember approaching this airplane, I went, well, am I gonna fit in there? It looks kind of small. And I'm not quite sure how the magic happens, but it seems much bigger inside than it looks from the outside. That's always kind of amazed me about the Jabiru line. So with uh, about 450 of this particular model and uh, over a thousand of the J series airplanes and 2,800 total airplanes flying and about 6,000 engines, I believe was the number Pete told me, uh, this company has had quite a run over a 25 year period since they got their first approval. One of the things I'll say about this airplane right away is that if you're looking for a cross country cruiser, this might be your airplane. It can carry a lot of stuff in the back. Uh, we talked about this in flight as well. It's a 260 pound capacity in the back because this is a four seater in Australia or a version of this airplane is a four seater in Australia. Now you can't put all that much in it in the light sport world because there just isn't that much gross weight available to you, but the airplane will carry its structure will carry 1,600 pounds. So if the regulations were different, it might be a different story, but the way it is today, you can easily carry pretty much whatever you want. Of course, doing weight and balance carefully and all that, and carry a lot of fuel and cruise at 120 knots. Now that's not just a number you can reach with the throttle buried, and maybe a little downhill slope to your flight. That's what it'll cruise at. Uh, because of the way the engine is, is set up and what is called maximum continuous power allowed under ASTM, this airplane can run at its max continuous pretty much all day, the number that they put. And at that, you'll see 120 knots or in true speed, you'll see even true airspeed, you'll see even a little bit higher than that, depending on conditions and altitude and factors like that. So I think that if you're looking for an airplane to go places, this is one to do it in. You got an 800 mile nautical range from the 36 gallons of fuel on board. It's a six cylinder engine under the uh, cowling up here. That's the Jabiru 3300 producing 120 horsepower. And it's a smooth, nice running engine. At maximum power on takeoff, I didn't sense any real vibration coming from it. Of course, some of that's a credit to how the engine's mounted under the cowling. Uh, but six cylinders, I think, has a certain amount of magic, just like three blades on a prop can have some magic to make things smoother. The airplane just ran very nicely. Uh, some interior qualities about it. First of all, the uh, look at how wide the door opens here. It goes all the way forward like this. There's a little strap back here that limits this so it can't get yanked by the wind, or hopefully you still need to pay attention. But uh, entry to the airplane uh, typically would be, I just turned around, sat down, and pulled my legs in. Uh, Pete uses a technique where he puts one leg in, ducks his head underneath the uh, uh, A-pillar here, and then uh, eases himself into the cockpit. But once you get inside, it's got a little bit of a sports car type feel. Maybe that's because here I am taller than it, and when I get in, I felt like I kind of sat down in the seat. So in the Jabiru J230, this is a composite airplane, all composite airplane. And um, as you can see here, you know, pulling my leg inside, uh, no big deal to get inside the airplane. Uh, one thing you do have to notice is that there's a throttle here that's uh, out of the way and you don't want to bump that too hard. However, that's a good news thing as we'll get further into it. Uh, the airplane, as I said, is kind of, a, it looks small from the outside. Once you get inside, this is a comfortable, nice flying airplane. One thing I always like, it's a minor detail perhaps, but the fact that there's an armrest right by the joystick makes it very easy to do just like you see me doing here, resting my arm. Uh, you may not be able to see it, although you might. There's a couple of little red buttons on the top. Those are not push to talk buttons. Those are autopilot disconnect buttons. The push to talk is over here right in front of my hand, the red button you see, and there's one on this side. There's one on that side too, right here. And here's what I'm gonna show you that I think is kind of interesting. Center hand in the, uh, your hand in the center uh, on, a, on this U-shaped joystick. So either pilot can fly or you could train. And Pete actually uses his hand this way, which is another technique. And that gives you a allow, you can be on the brake or, uh, or touching the other parts of the joystick easily that way. But with the throttle on the outside, you've got it on both sides. So your outside hand handles the throttle. 
And when you're taking off and need to talk, well, you've got your hand on the throttle anyway. Most pilots follow that procedure and push the talk button right there. But you've also got flaps here and on that side. So you've got flaps on both sides to operate the flaps. They're electric flaps. They go to any degree you want, but the maximum range is about 30 degrees. So let's have a look at the instrument panel here, which, by the way, and notice that I can't even get my knee. I'd, I'd have to work to get my knee near that panel. There's really a lot more room in here than it may look like from the outside, so it works really well. I'm going to pull the door closed here just so you get a view on that as well, because, and I'm not latching it, so I'm kind of holding it closed here. But you've also got a nice little armrest right here and an air vent that brings in lots of air. The, uh, the, the entry uh, uh, latches right down here underneath. And on the outside, it's very convenient as well. And you've got some place you can carry some gear with you then. So really nice uh, door arrangement. And by the way, this is a three-door airplane. There's one to get access to the back here, too, where my hand is. And so that allows very easy loading of that baggage area, which is, as I said, quite ample back there. Uh, if you wanted to carry, for example, you wanted to go camping or something like that, you could carry, as long as they weren't particularly heavy because of weight and balance, volume-wise, it's the biggest cabin in the business, I think, or certainly one of the one of the largest. So now looking back here at the panel again, uh, we see that it's a single uh, Garmin G3X Touch, which is a beautiful piece of equipment. It does everything, and you control the radio, and, and uh, you control everything through this single panel. So one device really does the job. Then a series of switches neatly installed there. But here's one thing I want to point out that's different on this airplane from many other airplanes. This has carb heat. And uh, Pete told us a funny story aloft about some guys in Texas that had dry conditions and never used that. Didn't forgot they had one there. But indeed, you do have a carburetor heat on this airplane. And uh, next to that is choke and cabin heat, just so you know what those other controls are. But that's basically it here. Throttle, push to talk, flap, the big screen, brake, a parking brake feature down here. You can see in this little red handle that will lock into position. And um, uh, pretty much that's the whole control of the airplane. As I mentioned, this is a cross-country flying airplane, and while you're in here, that sports car feel again, you've got kind of a smaller looking windscreen here, but when I look to the side here, as I point my head out to the side, this is high enough that I am, you know, you'd have to be really tall to be up in here, and you could be quite a bit taller than me, uh, and then maybe this would begin to interrupt a little bit, but for me, uh, my line of sight is right about here. I can see everything out there. And as I turn around here and look aft, you've got a rear window on the on the front side, and you've got a second rear window. So while I can't see the tailplane here, I can sure have a wide range of vision. I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 uh, degrees of visibility inside the airplane. So lots more you can learn about the Jabiru line. They have this large, uh, larger two-seater. There's a smaller two-seater called the J170D. Uh, that's a very uh, new re-entry uh, product to the uh, U.S. market. Uh, of course, they are, the company has their own line of engines, a 2200 four-cylinder and a 3300 six-cylinder. This one has the six-cylinder engine in it. You can find lots more about that and doing maintenance on engines and on airplanes and everything else on their website, which is jabrunna.com. And if you missed us here at the Midwest LSA Expo, we'd love for you to come down and see us at the DeLand Airport in DeLand, Florida. That's in early November. And uh, come on down. You can see and fly in the Jabiru yourself. You can read lots more about this airplane and many other airplanes in the range of affordable aviation on ByDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at the Midwest LSA Expo.